Now before this video starts, if you haven't already checked out our Spotify original podcast, yes you've heard me talk about this a lot, <laughs> but if you haven't checked out my sister and I's Spotify original podcast called Gee Thanks, and if you don't know what a podcast is, it's um, basically just people talking. But they're actually really cool, I promise. So I'm dressing up for Halloween. I'm a witch, as always. There's this old witch hat we have and one dress. It's just a black <laughs> dress and she's definitely outgrown at this yep. stage. I then decide, hey, I have this bandana. I'm going to use it as a sling because I want a broken arm for a night. We rock up to the, one of these um, houses and we went as a group. So I was the last person to get a lolly. And the lady looked at me. Oh, no, she's got a broken arm. And Sweet. tips the whole bowl of lollies <laughs> into my basket. Follow, follow and listen for free only on Spotify. Go over and follow. You know you want to. <laughs> anyway, back to the video. Hi there, I'm Georgia. And let's be real, I wasn't the most intelligent kid in school. But you know, I had my moments. Like for example, in year six, I got elected to be my house's sports captain. To be honest, I don't even know why I ran for sport captain. Because at 12 years old, I had no interest in any type of leadership whatsoever. I mean, except for the time I'd lost a tooth and then put a tic tac in the gap to see what it would look like with a full set of teeth. I call that leadership. <laughs> I just never understood why any kid wanted to be any type of school captain because let's be real, it's just another responsibility that you don't even have to do. Like if you gave me a guinea pig and then gave me the option to clean up its shit or not, what do you think I'm gonna choose? Actually, I'd probably choose to clean it up. <laughs> Cause as a kid, I thought guinea pig poo was really fascinating. Every time, like without fail, it would just like pop out in a little chocolate bullet looking shape. I don't know, it was, it was satisfying. My sister and I even had competitions to see whose guinea pig could poop more. At the end of like half an hour, we'd just count up the little poos. Oh my god, it was also double points if it was two stuck together, like a little mangled M&M. I mean, it was all fun and games until my sister found out a way to cheat. Yep, that's right, she would turn her back and unbeknownst to me, she would lightly squeeze the guinea pig's belly and... Rapid fire. <sighs> There's a visual for you all. Kind of looked a bit like Boba shooting out a straw. That was also slight animal abuse, I don't recommend. What did you do with your childhood? <laughs> Oh? Yeah, look, I'm sorry. It's just all this talk about shit. Who was I again? Oh yeah, school captains. <laughs> now when it came to electing the actual school captains, no one ever voted for the speeches that were actually any good. Everyone was just bored out of their minds hearing every kid in the year just read a speech that their parents definitely hadn't written for them the night before. Oh no. You know, bragging about their commitment to the school and the fact that their head girl scowled. <laughs> no one gives a shit, Rebecca. <laughs> I promise to lead the school with persistence and elegance. Like, you only just learnt what elegance meant that morning. Literally no one cared who would lead the school better. Everyone just voted for the funniest ones. You know, like that kid who had absolutely no leadership intentions whatsoever and was just there for shits and gigs. I'm just here for shits and gigs. Everyone was just waiting for that kid to say the five magic words that were guaranteed to win. Coca-Cola in the bubblers. Then there was always that kid who did something like mildly impressive at the end, like a little cartwheel or something. And just the cartwheel itself made her a solid contender. So remember, vote Olivia B, the cartwheel queen. I mean, honestly, I never understood the necessity for primary school leadership in the first place because, well, let's be real, it's not. <laughs> well, there goes a few subs. I mean, come on, can you really do anything different to the next kid that might have got school captain when the teachers just give you the same shit to say each week? Or... Assemblies were just that boring. I don't think anyone was ever actually listening. I mean, most assemblies, I'd just sit there trying to figure out which kid would die if a fan fell off the ceiling. Else? But now looking back as an adult, I can see why kids wanted to do it. They just wanted to use the microphone. They just wanted to hear their squeaky little voice boom throughout the school hall because it just felt cool. I mean, not to mention the girl school captain was always a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, so that's right. She'd strut around the school with her little plastic school captain badge equipped with her $2 Supre headband she bought with a bag. You know, being annoying and running around the playground telling everyone who's not wearing a hat to wear one. Because, oh, she thinks she's a teacher now. <laughs> and then, I don't know, probably bullying the kid with the mangy eyebrow. You know that kid with, like, one normal eyebrow and the other one just, like, flying up that one? Like, I wish I could have told her that standing up to say... I'd like to announce Mr. Ross to the stage to announce the announcements. ...isn't leadership. That's just something the teachers gave you to say to make you feel more important. It's like when I was three and my mum gave me a bucket of water and a paintbrush and then told me to go paint the fence to keep me occupied. <laughs> and then when it finally came to the end of the year, the school captains would always have to do that cringy little end of year speech that always went something like this. Well guys, we made it. Now looking back on our year group, I can see that we have grown into such independent, intelligent young boys and girls. So let's finish this year off with a bang.